Featuring Drake University football. Head football coach Rob Ash and your host, Mick Trier. Brought to you in part by Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leaders. And by Home Team Pizza. Free, fast delivery. It's a hit. Hi, and welcome to the Raw Bay Show. Well, Coach, you picked up another one, 28-6 to 6 over Northwestern. First off, congratulations on the win, and a nice win indeed for the Drake Bulldogs. Well, thank you, Mick. It was just a charm season. We had a great time this year. We finished with eight wins, only one loss and a tie, and, you know, seven in a row, I think, at the end of the year. So it was a great, a great year. Seven uh, straight victories. You mentioned, did you think starting off the season it would, would have been this great of a year? Well, Mick, we had a tough schedule, you know, and I looked at the at the people we had to play going into this year, and I was hoping for survival. And, you know, really, uh, with Dayton and in our league being tough and all the non-conference games we had, uh, I have to tell you, we exceeded expectations, although we always knew this group of guys had the ability to be good. But to be this good, at everything had to click. And after all the injuries in preseason, you know, it looked like it was going to be tough, and they really came around. Finished up with this Northwestern team. I didn't know a whole lot about Northwestern going in. And uh, what would you think going in? Did you think the Bulldogs could handle them? Well, we didn't know. We had no idea how we would match up with them. But I tell you, watching them warm up before the game, I knew why they have been so successful. I knew why they had been in the playoffs last year and so, been so good this year. They have great athletes. They're, they're strong, confident, fast runners, you know, very talented football team. And they matched up with us real well. Well, we have some exciting highlights coming up. And we'll also show you how they got the snow moved off the football <laughs> field in order to play on Saturday. We'll look at the highlights coming up next on the Rob Ash Show. Quality, style, luxury, everything you've come to expect from Buick. Selection, service, value, all you can expect when you visit Capital City Buick. From the Skylark to the Park Avenue Ultra, Capital City Buick offers Central Iowa's largest selection of new Buicks and has quietly built a reputation for genuine service, not pressure. Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leader. When Home Team Pizza delivers, we never know quite what to expect. But you know what to expect. Home Team Pizza's here! Yeah! Home Team Pizza's here with the new Huger Hughes 20-inch pizza. Right now, get a single topping for only $9.99. Pick up for free delivery in Greater Des Moines, Ames, and Ankeny. You may have made a difference in someone's life. We can't tell you their name or anything about them. We can tell you that by using or being a designated driver like 80 million other Americans, you've made a very real contribution. You see, drunk driving fatalities declined by 32% in the last 10 years. We salute America's designated drivers, and we urge everyone to join you. By doing what's right, you're making things better. A message from Budweiser. To make a great Sunday brunch, start with a great view. Add something colorful and healthy. And don't forget to add something a little sinful. Add something steamy and delicious and really pile it on. Then make sure you add the right stuff, like good friends. Sunday morning at the Capitol View Dining Room. Brunch at the Best Western Starlight Village downtown once, and you'll be back for more. And welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Coach, again, congratulations on your win on Saturday over Northwestern. Got to ask you, it was snowing on Friday. How'd you get this field even ready to play for Saturday? Well, Mick, I didn't do it, but the guys who did deserve all the credit in the world. The Drake Physical Plant guys got to campus uh, early Saturday morning, about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, cleaned off the rest of the campus, then came over to the football field. and. They did a brilliant job. They scraped the snow off with a blade, and then they got the brush and, and took the ice off the grass. The lines were perfect. The grass was fine. It was an unbelievable job by the physical plant guys, and the surface was great to play on. One last question here before we look at the highlights. Were you a little concerned with that week off after San Diego and winning the Pioneer Football League? Concerned about the players being ready to go? 
I kind of was right after the San Diego game, but as the week wore on, we got closer to the game, our team became motivated to win this game for the seniors, and I think that's what got us ready to play. Nobody in the program wanted the seniors to lose their last game, and the seniors didn't want to lose their last game, so that was driving us, and I think it helped us play. Let's take a look at the highlights of this football game. You're going to see a little snow on the sidelines there. <laughs> it was cold, too, Mick. Don't forget the cold. I mean, it was brutal. You'll see stocking hats, snow, and everything else, but our guys uh, really handled the conditions very well, and so did North Northwestern and we got a pretty good game uh, as far as the conditions went. Northwestern came out of the uh, came out of the blocks throwing the football. Uh, they missed three passes in a row. They had the ball first, and so we took over and we ran the football like we always do. Charlie Schimberg uh, got getting about 10 yards there on a carry after we stopped them on their first possession and they had to punt. We did find ourselves in a short yardage deal here, fourth and one. And we went for it early. I think we just wanted to establish our, the fact that we could run the ball for the short yardage. Schimberg with a real nice run there behind Matt Jones and Grabanski and Felix Gallagher. And then this play right here, just almost a, a ball that would have been complete down to the five-yard line. Chad Hying ended up getting a face full of snow there. But the, the other defender got his hand up and, and blocked Chad's view, and he couldn't see it. So we had to settle for a field goal try on our first possession and that ball was heavy as lead in that ice cold weather and uh, McKee could not get it up there. It was a 39 yard field goal so we got came up blank after moving the ball well on our first possession. The option game is what they really came into the game uh, with that we were concerned with and Tommy Becker makes a good tackle there on the pitch and we stopped their running game extremely well all day long. On our second possession here we got a, a number of things going run and pass. Here's a short ball from Fletcher to Robbie Berkeley. We mixed things up pretty well, I felt, in the initial stages of this game between run and pass. Here's a nice play from uh, Fletcher to Charlie Henry. Uh, Roy hit Charlie three or four times over the middle with some good quick passes that helped us a lot. Then we came down here in the uh, uh, short yardage situation. This was fourth and ten, and Charlie Schimberg got about nine and a half. And it gives Northwestern credit. They came up really hard and stopped him right short of the line. So. Uh, we ended up with two really good drives and no points to show for it, which was pretty frustrating for our offense. And first quarter's coming to an end here. Excellent pass break up there by Matt Garvis. You don't often see a 230-pound linebacker knocking down a ball about 18 yards deep in the secondary, but that put them in a punting situation. Look at the top of the screen here now. Number two from the top, 38, Jeff Michaels is going to block this punt. And then 31, my, uh, Matt Miller's going to pick it up and run it in for a touchdown. What a big play this was in the game. You can see all our guys getting tremendously excited about that. You know, we had driven the ball well, but we hadn't scored, and the special teams put the first points on the board. That was a great play, and it fired up our defense. It really stopped the, the running game. And we go into second quarter action. Watch the up back here. They're going to fake the punt, short snap, and he's going to come right up the middle. Now, we, we were a little bit overconfident, I think, at that point. We were going to block another one, and they came up with a good play and uh, fake the punt, so uh, I give him credit for a very good call there. Our run defense, though, came right back and stopped him, and then on third down, they, the quarterback gets out of the pocket, but Tommy Becker has just excellent coverage on the receiver there, no place to go, so on that fourth down try, they gave us the ball back, so their fake punt did not result in any points. Here's a nice run by Grove, just about getting out of there to get something done, and here's a great pass from Fletcher to, to Rob Berkeley. Look at this catch by Rob Berkeley. He read the blitz. He knew he had man-to-man -man coverage, and, and Fletcher uh, got it out there to him. Unfortunately, we got stalled again, so we still were drawing a blank on our offensive possessions. Matt Sneller here. Watch this punt. Special teams again for our, t our side this time. The guys did a great job recovering that down inside the five. Now, I'd like to tell you that we held them there, but unfortunately what happened was they ran the ball three times, got a first down, and then on the, uh, right away about the fourth play of this drive, they threw a beautiful fade pattern. And I'll tell you, Kerman Mason made a great play here to catch up and, and get this guy down. And then watch the inside linebackers here. Matt Garvis and Anthony Fuller are going to blitz. On the very first play after that catch, Coach Neiman with a great call, you know, getting them uh, uh, pressured. And then outside linebacker blitz on the second down results in an interception. So Coach Neiman went to a real aggressive uh, play calling sequence there right after the big play. Two blitzes, one inside, one outside. We get a sack, you know, a tackle for a loss, that is, and then an interception. So the defense really snuffed out that uh, rally. And then the big play of the first half, a sack by Brian Peck, fumble recovery there by Eric Musha. This is about a minute and a half left in the half. And uh, we come back then, run our two-minute drill. Super pass here from Roy Fletcher to Rich Hoskins. That converted a fourth and eight and kept the drive alive. And then there's going to be another pass here. Great protection by the offensive line. Fletcher has lots of time to throw. The two tight ends crossed, and that opened up the seam. 
And then here's the uh, running play by Schimberg. There's about 15 seconds left in the half. We called our last timeout. Now watch the left tight end, uh, Grabanski, 94. He's going to run right in the middle of four defenders. Fletcher says no problem. He threaded the needle. That's a miracle pass right there. I don't know how it got through, but it was a touchdown, and we were able to get the, the, the touchdown right before the half key play. Boy, a great first half indeed for the Drake Bulldogs. Here's some of the folks that make the show possible. Coach, got to be happy with everything in the first half, especially the offense. Well, the offense came through at the very end there to get the big touchdown, and then we got the ball to start the second half. And here's one of the best runs of the day. Jason Grove breaks about five tackles. Really got us inspired coming out of the locker room. Very big uh, drive here to start the third quarter. You see, we scored right before the half. We got the ball to start the second half, and we're going to drive down and score again. Great play fake here by Fletcher. Nice pass to Jason Grabanski. Mixing the run and the pass here on this first drive. And uh, this is where we really got ourselves a cushion. The offense came out of the blocks doing a great job. Here's a good job by uh, uh, Fletcher. Now he's going to hit Hoskins underneath. Richie does a good job reading the coverage and getting out there and taking the ball clear down inside the 20. And then our offensive line and our running game took over. Uh, Schimberg's going to run hard behind that, uh, that good offensive line and make some good tough yards. And then uh, Grove is going to take it to the left here behind Grabanski, Jones, Felix Gallagher, Nate Schneider, Garrett LaFleur, Portman, and Charlie Henry just pounded the ball in. That's one reason we've been good this year. We've been able to get the ball in the red zone and run the football in for the touchdowns. 21-0, and really we scored two times in a row here before they could get the ball back. Defense continued to play well, though, too, Mick. B.J. Hellyer thought he had that interception and uh, didn't quite get the call from the officials, so the, uh, Northwestern still had it. Good coverage there. They thought they had the, uh, the pass open, couldn't find anybody. And then the completion. Now, that player was on his knees. Garvis really backed off and, and didn't hit him very hard, but the officials called it a 15-yard penalty. A very discouraging call for us because, really, Matt could have could have hit him a lot harder. I thought he did his best job to stop, and that was uh, a frustrating call for us. But the defense recovered nicely. Here's Lance Batts. Looks like he's got a, an opening, but Fisher closes really fast, and between him and Lupori, they, they uh, got a good hit on Batts and tackled him. And then the uh, coverage sack again. Uh, great coverage in the secondary, allowing the guys to get in and, and, uh, and tackle the quarterback. So it was a very frustrating day for their passing game. And here's another one, tipped ball. Jeremy Fisher very alertly picking it up. And I tell you, if he stepped out of bounds, he didn't step out by more than an inch. And it's too bad to take a touchdown away. Uh, Jeremy at first thinks he scores, then he looks back, and now he realizes they called him out of bounds. He was a little bothered, as we all were. And uh, we tried our trick play here. Now watch, Hoskins is going to fake the reverse. And look at the collision right there between him and the linebacker. Unbelievable collision. And Berkeley should have had the touchdown. But the ball drifted with the wind a little bit away and couldn't get it. And then a uh, quick cut here. We've got an interception by B.J. Hellyer, number 21. B.J. made up for the one they didn't call by making a great interception. So after uh, Fishers, we didn't score. We just missed on the long ball. And then Hellyer with another interception. We had three interceptions for the day. Here's a nice sack by Jay Smirka. Uh, you know, they had 31 incomplete passes and three interceptions for the day. We also had four sacks. So, you know, our, our, our defense against the pass game was terrific. Here's a nice play fake by Fletcher. He's going to throw the ball deep. You know it's a good play fake, I have to say again, when we fake out Kurt because he sees us all the time. But got back there in time to see Hoskins was uh, wide open, but they closed on him and they, they, they pushed him so he didn't get the uh, reception, but he got the pass interference call. Looks like we're in good shape. And then here's one good job by uh, Northwestern. Greg Terpster, they're all American, uh, cuts in front of Hoskins and makes the interception. We probably went to the well once too often on a pass we've used a lot this year. That gave them a little uh, breath of life, so they tried a trick play of their own. 
Should have been intercepted. Jeremy Fisher had it, and he slipped right at the moment when he was going to pick that ball off. So Northwestern still had the ball. Now it's 21 to 6, fourth quarter, and it, you know, it could get exciting here if they can get anything done on offense. But we knocked down the ball there at the line of scrimmage. Jay Smirka, 6'5, tough guy to throw over. And so we got the ball back again. Here's a nice job again. Another one of those passes from uh, Fletcher to Charlie Henry. Charlie ran into the umpire about six times in this game, but they still had several catches. And then here's a beautiful pass. This is Roy Fletcher's last pass as a Drake Bulldog. I took him out of the game after this, a touchdown to Robbie Berkeley. Wanted him to end his career on that, on that play right there, and that was, uh, that's going to be something he'll remember for a long time. So that gave us a 28-6 lead. Defense continued to play outstanding football. Uh, Northwestern went to a two-minute drill trying to throw the ball. They, they tried lots of different things in the, at the end of the game here, throwing the ball. Uh, Kerman Mason had great coverage there on a fourth down play. We got the ball back. Got a lot of people in the game at the end. Here's Brad Foltz making a sack, and we held out, ran out the string, played a lot of people. Ben Wolford played, Cortez Hall got a few carries. Craig McLean got in the game, a lot of defensive guys. So uh, we ended up having a pretty good time of it. Coach, taking a look at those highlights, it, it appears to me, and probably most of the viewers, that you completely dominated that game. Was it that way? I, I don't know that we dominated it to the extent that, uh, you know, that Northwestern isn't in our league or anything. I mean, they played well. They're a physical team. I thought they have a lot of good plays, but our defense was so overpowering. You know, they never really had too many opportunities to score, and I think our offense did a great job creating opportunities. We made more big plays, and I think we just caught them in, in some situations that were good. I think it's going to be a good, a good series as we go along, and I'm already dreading going up there to Orange City to play them next year at the end of the year because I know they'll be gunning for us. You know, we knocked them out of the playoffs by beating them this year, and I'm sure they're going to put Drake on the bulletin board and be watching play well every time we play them. Let's take a look at the stats of the uh, game and boy, I'll tell you what, look at the possession time. Yeah, the possession time at the very bottom is a key statistic. We, it shows that we were able to run the football against them. The other thing that's key is the next to the bottom line is the turnovers. They had four turnovers, we just had one and you know th this, is, this is how you win football games and you look at the top there too, uh, the rushing yards for them and again I say this, when you can stop the run and run the football you can win, that's what we were able to do. Looks like, uh, like you mentioned, of course, earlier, it's very workmanlike for the Bulldogs. Well, we weren't necessarily sky high, but we played very well, and we were motivated to win for those seniors. Got our Capital City Buick play of the game coming up with the coach. We'll do it right after this. You don't have to be a Cyclone fan. You need a Johnny Orr Sports Grill. Everyone is on the home court for a great lunch or dinner here. And at Johnny Orr Sports Grill, you can bring the entire team, from seasoned veterans to the rookie of the year. You can even book your next event in the Banquet and Conference Center. You don't have to be a Cyclone fan to come into Johnny Orr's Sports Grill, but you may be one when you leave. Hey, we, we love it! We love it! We love it! Are you looking for that just right place to hold your company's or club's Christmas party? Well, you found it at the Bavarian House Restaurant in Des Moines. With the cozy old world atmosphere that enhances the holiday spirit and the most delicious dishes in Des Moines. The Bavarian House features American favorites like prime rib and chicken, along with scrumptious German dishes and a dessert menu second to none. Call today to discuss your customized and personalized holiday party at the Bavarian House. 265-5611. That's 265-5611. This message brought to you by Preferred Risk Insurance, America's non-drinkers insurance company. If we can get all of the athletes and coaches in America buying in to the being all that God's created them to be, to understand that they are something special, then we can have an impact across America like no other group because the athletes and coaches have the strongest influence in America today than any other group. And one way to play, one way to play is rug free, one way to live, one way to be what God wants you to be. And welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Time now for our Capital City Buick Play of the Game. Coach? Well, this week's play was a blocked punt that resulted in a touchdown for Drake. The score is 0-0. Zero to zero. It's right at the end of the first quarter. Offense has been moving the ball, but we haven't got any points, so I guess the special teams decided to take over. Uh, we noticed on the tapes we thought we could get a block, and, and they got a uh, man-to-man protection scheme here. What we did is we lined up six guys against their five blockers and their personal protector. Everybody had to beat one guy. The one who is successful is Jeff Michaelsick, working right here against the tackle. You can see him beat that block and move on in. Uh, Fisher also beat his block. He came in and gave it a try, but Michael Zick's the one who gets it right here. He makes the block. The punt came off to that side, and he got to get a good job of getting his hands on the football, keeping his hands together to make the play. At this point, now everybody hears the second thud, which means it's blocked. The official, you notice, is going to signal that the ball's been tipped. 
That means we can pick it up and advance it, of course, and, and away we go. Here's Matt Miller, number 31, gets a Sunday hop. One big bounce. You never know how that ball is going to bounce. He got a good hop and picked it up on the run, and now we're off to the races. Uh, Matt's going to take off here. Now, the guy who could stop him is the punter. Jeremy DeBee is a good athlete, but Matt Miller was, is a running back. He was a running back when he came to us out of high school. He breaks the tackle, gets on into the end zone for the touchdown. You'll notice the guy's going crazy about the touchdown. Obviously, they're excited, but what's interesting here is you got some guys, Shannon Larrigan, Frank Harlan Bacchus, Miller, Michael Zick. Those four guys, all they really do is play special teams. The other guys in there, Mason and, and uh, Fisher, they also play all the time on defense. But those four guys, along with a lot of other guys, have made great special teams plays for us. This was one of the biggest of the year. Well, usually at this time we have our home team pizza player interview. But home team pizza wanted to salute all the seniors on the Drake University football team this year. I couldn't be there to interview the seniors, so we asked for the help of senior Craig McLean. I think you'll enjoy this. Feels like a, a championship team with Craig McLean. Tell you what, it's the greatest feeling I've had in quite a while. Craig, you're the greatest. Thank you. And Kermit came here as a JUCO transfer, and he told me the main reason he came is he knew I was here. And what do you say about that? Well, hey, you're the reason why I'm here. You're the reason I do great. You're the greatest, Craig. Thanks. Anything you want to say? Yeah, that you're the greatest. Oh, you're okay. The All right. You're the top of everything. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Craig. Cortez, basically, how does it feel to play with me overall? Oh, it's a great feeling, Craig. You're the, you're the best, man. I've learned all my skills from you. You're the teacher. I, I don't know what to say. You're the master. All right. Garrett, you got a little penalty down there, personal foul. Can you explain what you were thinking when you hit that guy through the whistle? I was thinking about you, Craig. You know? <laughs> the best thing about playing with you, Craig, is when you switch from quarterback to D-back and never had to see you in practice. <laughs> Next interview. Boy. Anything you want to say to the fans here? Uh, just thanks for the memories. Thanks. First game in the snow, Bobby? Second game in the snow. Second game in the snow, okay. I'm How's Evan Ziller, freshman year. Oh, You're right. quarterback. I was quarterback in that game. By the way, led us to victory that game. <laughs> How's it feel to play in the cold right, right up here from... As compared to Florida. It's terrible. I hate it. Uh, it's, it's the worst. But, you know, we won, so that's good. So. All right. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah. AJ, what did you feel about Roy overthrowing you? You're wide open on the sideline over there. <laughs> well, uh, Roy has a nice ball and everything, but uh, a little too high. Yeah. You guys think you say to your fans here? Yeah, I get too much clothes on to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to say to the fans? Uh, thank you. All right. Thanks. Senior tight end. Came in as a quarterback with me. Probably the re reason he stuck it out, you know, getting a little challenge for me at the quarterback. So how did it feel to switch positions? Well, that's the reason why I switched, Craig, because of you. Because I, <laughs> I thought I'd have to compete with you at quarterback, and I knew I'd have no chance, so that's why I switched. Okay, it was rough here with the injuries, but I uh, made it through all the way to the end. Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. Well, Craig, the best thing about uh, here, our four years, is not the teammates on the field, but the teamwork we had off the field. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, we been through a lot together. What do you got to say about being a championship with Craig McClain? Well, I'll tell you what, the toughest thing about it is I play defense. I never get a chance to hit you in practice. <laughs> Scotty, and now you, one week you're a Notre Dame fan, next week you're an Illinois fan, Northwestern. Now, who is it? Final, who's your well, favorite team? Northwestern this week. They won, didn't they? Yeah, who, who, wait, by the way, who'd they beat this week? <laughs> probably Iowa. Okay, all right, all right. Anything to say to your family here? Uh, no, hello. Thanks for coming <laughs> out. <every time. laughs> all right. I get nervous in front of the camera. <laughs> all right, thanks, Scotty. Roy, AJ said didn't mind you overthrowing them, and yet... You overthrew uh, Berkeley on a couple. What do you guys say about those throws? Well, you know, that happens, and uh, that's life. Yeah? How, when we were uh, freshmen together playing quarterback, how, how did I push you and make you a better quarterback? Well, you know, uh, that's the only reason I stayed is because you were here. We had great times. Uh, the Evansville trip. You yeah. took care of me in California, and that was what it was all about. Okay, thanks, Roy. Thank you. What do you got to say about today's game? You're playing in the cold and everything. Big win, huh? Big win. It's, it's great to play. I love the cold, you know. When you hit people, it hurts a little bit more. So that's, I know the feeling. I know hitting people hard. I'm used to that. You know. I know you didn't get to play with me because you were on offense. I was on defense. But uh, you know, maybe in the pros someday, huh? Hey. Well, <laughs> I don't want to announce that till later on. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. A few years here together playing defense together. Uh, how much fun was I to have around in practice? Well, like Coach Steven says, it'd be a pretty solemn group without Craig McLean. So it's a good thing you're with us. See you. Thanks. Thanks. Anything to say to your fans here? I'm um, cool. Let's go home. <laughs> Tommy. Now, I had a girlfriend my sophomore year, and all you do is talk about this girl all the time. Here's your shot to tell her how much you love her here on camera. No, 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 no. You've got nothing to prove, though. You've got nothing to prove. Just kidding, Tommy. How's it feel to be a roommate and a player with me? Sam, it's been a great four years. We've had a lot of fun on and off the road. Thanks. Thanks, Tommy. Great linebacker, all-conference, and leading tackler at Drake in a career, right? Yeah. You want to talk about that a little? Uh, no. I, I'm just glad I played with you. McLean. This is a hard interview. You're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Hi, I'm Rich Hoskins from Lake Forest, Illinois. Uh, I'm a wide receiver. This is my friend Craig McLean. I would like to thank my family, my parents especially, my Uncle Brian, my Uncle Bob, Cousin Dan, my aunts. It's been great. Thanks a lot, Jen. Ask me, man. Uh, Craig, what's it like to uh, be a friend with me? <laughs> well, basically the hoss. I mean, he's the man. He runs the campus, and me and him together can't be stopped, you know? The two, I mean... Ladies just love us, you know. Thank you very much. <laughs> and a great, great group of seniors there, Coach. You're going to lose there. You can see how much fun they had on camera. They have that much fun as well off the camera. And you can see why they had so much success this year. Back to get the final comments from the coach right after this. It's apparent when you arrive at Legends that you have come to a special place. West Des Moines' newest in-place is more than a sports bar. It's a sports grill or, more exact, a full-service family menu restaurant. We defy you to find a seat that doesn't have a comfortable TV viewing. What, with 21 TVs and two satellite dishes, you can relax, eat, drink, and enjoy watching your favorite sport. If that happens to be darts, we're sure you can find a game. Legends was named correctly. It already is. 60th and Ashworth Road, West Des Moines. Open at 11 a.m. daily. When home team pizza delivers, we never know quite what to expect. But you know what to expect. Home team pizza's here! Yeah! Home team pizza's here with the new huger huge 20-inch pizza. Right now, get a single topping for only $9.99. Pick up for free delivery in Greater Des Moines, Ames, and Ankeny. Quality, style, luxury, everything you've come to expect from Buick. Selection, service, value, all you can expect when you visit Capital City Buick. From the Skylark to the Park Avenue Ultra, Capital City Buick offers Central Iowa's largest selection of new Buicks and has quietly built a reputation for genuine service, not pressure. Capital City Buick, Des Moines' new value leader. Now let me get this straight. You want me to get up at 11.45 on Sunday morning, watch you guys on game day for an hour and 15 minutes, talking about all the upcoming games, then watch all the games for six hours, then turn back to watch you guys on prime time to wrap up all the games for another hour? In other words, over eight hours of non-stop football? Yeah! All right, I love it. <laughs> all right, <laughs> And welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Well, Coach, it's hard to believe the season is over now for the uh, Drake Bulldogs, but i got to ask you, now the season's over, you got a chance to kind of look back. You beat Dayton. You won the Pioneer Football League. Nice trip out to San Diego. And it's been a great year. You've had some great seniors. What, what's been the highlight for the season for you as a coach and for your players? Well, Mick, that's a tough question because there were so many highs, but I think it's got to be the Dayton game. I mean, winning against Dayton, getting over that hurdle, that set up all the rest. Winning the league, of course, is a great thrill also. Uh, maybe the best thing, though, we just were informed at Quarterback Club this week that in 102 years of Drake football, there's only been six teams that have won eight games or more, and two of those six have been in the last three years. So we've got the program at the, at the peak for Drake football. I think we also have our show here at the peak. I know it's yeah. been a great year for everybody that's been involved. You know there's a lot of people behind the scenes. They get to see us on camera. Coach, I have enjoyed this year more than any we've, I've ever done. Well, it's been a great year, Mick. I want to thank you for working again, doing a great job on the show, and John Hand and Kurt Wilkerson behind the scenes. It's a great team, as good a team as one we had on the field. Thanks. And we'll look for, what, about 9-0 next year? Or, <laughs> Here we uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next year on the Rob Ash Show. Thanks for watching.
<laughs> Just do my own interview. So uh. <laughs> Come on. She wants to be in here. Back up. You ready? This is Craig McLean with you. Final game. Just beat Northwestern Iowa, 28 to six, with senior Mike McKee. Real quick question: What's it feel like in a championship team with Craig McLean? Tell you what, it's the greatest feeling I've had in quite a while. Craig, you're the greatest. Thank you. Anything you want to say to fans, or parents, or anything? No, just thanks to everybody for following me throughout the entire uh, four years, and hope we can keep going <laughs> with the team next couple years too. All right, thanks, Mike. Hey. Here we are with senior Kerman Mason, fellow D-back. No now, Kerman came here as a JUCO transfer, and he told me the main reason he came is he knew I was here. And what do you say about that? <laughs> well, hey, you're the reason why I'm here. You're the reason I do great. You're the greatest, correct? Thanks. Anything you want to say? Yeah, that you're the greatest. Oh, you're okay. The best. All right. You're the top of everything. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Greg. This is Cortez Hall, senior running back. Cortez, basically, how does it feel to play with me overall? Oh, it's a great feeling, Craig. You're the, you're the best, man. I've learned all my skills from you. You're the teacher. I, I don't know what to say. You're the master. All right. There's a streak going on here, whatever it feels about me. <laughs> Garrett LaFleur, offensive lineman. Garrett, you got a little penalty down there, personal foul. Can you explain what you were thinking when you hit that guy through the whistle? I was thinking about you, Craig. You know? <laughs> the best thing about playing with you, Craig, is when you switch from quarterback to D-back. I never had to see you in practice. <laughs> Next interview. Uh, Brian Peck. Senior from Chicago, and I want to ask him about an NFL game and the Rams beat the Bears, and the Bears aren't that good. So how do you feel the Bears are going to do this year? Hey, they're going all the way to the Super Bowl. Okay. All, all the way. Anything you want to say to the fans here? Uh, just thanks for the memories. Thanks. All right. Uh... Bobby Hamilton, senior from Florida. First game in the snow, Bobby? Second game in the snow. Second game in the snow, okay. I'm Evan Zuller, freshman year. Oh, that's You're right. the quarterback. I was quarterback in that game. By the way, led us to victory that game. How's it feel to play in the cold right, right up here from, as compared to Florida? It's terrible. I hate it. Uh, it's, it's the worst. But, you know, we won, so that's good. So. All right. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah. A.J. Mom, senior wide receiver from Iowa. A.J., what do you feel about Roy overthrowing you? You're wide open on the sideline over there. <laughs> well, uh, Roy's a nice ball and everything, but uh, a little too high. Yeah? You guys think you say to your fans here? Yeah, I get too much clothes on to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to say to the fans? Uh, thank you. All right, thanks. Hey. Jason Grabanski, senior tight end, came in as a quarterback with me. Probably the re reason he stuck it out, you know, getting a little challenge for me at the quarterback. So how did it feel to switch positions? Well, that's the reason why I switched, Craig, because of you. Because I, <laughs> I thought I'd have to compete with you at quarterback, and I knew I'd have no chance, so that's why I switched. Okay, it was a rough year with injuries, but I uh, made it through all the way to the end. Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay, good job. Thanks. And here he is, the law dog, Chris Ash, one of my roommates. He's on the junior high bed schedule every night. Goes to bed at 1030. <laughs> Rough year with the injury. He hurt his knee right there during two days, but he stuck it out, helped out the team up in the coach's office. Uh, what do you guys say, Chris? Well, Craig, the best thing about uh, here, our four years, is not the teammates on the field, but the teamwork we had off the field. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Andrews, senior defensive end. Brian, we been through a lot together. What do you guys say about being a championship with Craig McLean? Well, I'll tell you what, the toughest thing about it is I play defense. I never get a chance to hit you in practice. <laughs> Next interview. Here we go, Scott Lapore, senior linebacker from Chicago. Scotty, and now you one week you're a Notre Dame fan, next week you're an Illinois fan, Northwestern. Now, who is it? Final, who's your well, favorite team? Northwestern this week, they won, didn't they? Yeah, who, <laughs> wait, by the way, who'd they beat this week? <laughs> Probably Iowa. Okay, all right, all right. Anything to say to your family here? Uh, no, hello. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I get nervous in front of the camera. <laughs> all right, thanks, Scott. Here we go, the old man. This is Grandpa Fletcher here, fifth year senior from Oklahoma. Roy, AJ said didn't mind you overthrowing him, and yet you overthrew uh, Berkeley on a couple. What do you guys say about those throws? Well, you know, that happens, and uh, that's life. Yeah? How, when we were uh, freshmen together playing quarterback, how, how did I push you and make you a better quarterback? Well, you know, uh, that's the only reason I stayed is because you were here. We had great times, uh, the Evansville trip. You yeah. took care of me in California, and that was what it was all about. Okay, thanks, Roy. Thank you. Your senior, Matt Jones, an all-conference off offensive lineman, good lineman. What do you got to say about today's game? You're playing in the cold and everything. Big win, huh? Big win. It's, it's great to play. I love the cold, you know. When you hit people, it hurts them a little bit more. So that's. I know that's the good. feeling. I know hitting people hard. I'm used to that. You know. Right. I know you didn't get to play with me because you were on offense. I was on defense. But uh, you know, maybe in the pros someday, huh? Hey, well, <laughs> I don't want to announce that till later on. Okay. All right. All right. That's Thanks, a, Matt. Thanks. A... It's Darren Buck, senior defensive back. A few years here together playing defense together. Uh, 
How much fun was I to have around in practice? Well, like Coach Steven says, it'd be a pretty solemn group without Craig McLean, so it's a good thing you're with us. See you. Thanks, thanks. Anything to say to your fans here? Uh, I'm cold. Let's go home. <laughs> thanks. Here we go. <laughs> Tommy Becker is my roommate here. Tommy, now, I had a girlfriend my sophomore year, and all you do is talk about this girl all the time. Here's your shot to tell her how much you love her here on camera. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's got nothing to prove, though. He's got nothing to prove. Just kidding, Tommy. How's it feel to be a roommate and a player with me? Sam, it's been a great four years. We've had a lot of fun on and off the road. Thanks. Thanks, Tommy. Oh, here we go. Matt Garvis. Transferred in from Minnesota. Same reason Kermit did, because I was here. But uh, great, great linebacker, all-conference, and leading tackler at Drake in a career, right? Yeah. You want to talk about that a little? Uh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just glad I played with you, McLean. This is a hard interview. You're out of here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rich Hoskins from Lake Forest, Illinois. Uh, I'm a wide receiver. This is my friend Craig McLean. I would like to thank my family, my parents especially, my Uncle Brian, my Uncle Bob, Cousin Dan, my aunts. It's been great. Thanks a lot, Jen. Ask me a uh, Craig, what's it like to uh, be a friend with me? <laughs> well, basically the hoss. I mean, he's the man. He runs the campus, and me and him together can't be stopped, you know? The two, I mean, ladies just love us, you know? Thank you very much. <laughs>